Yeah, I know it's been a while, but we kind of got ourselves into a bit of a situation here. I guess you could say... We've, we've been tied up! up. <laughs> now you're probably wondering just what happened. We just saw Hail Caesar! Bert, what did you think of Hail Caesar? I liked it. What did you think of Hail Caesar? I liked it. What did the audience think of Hail Caesar? Oh my god, what's happening? I think this movie was a ton of fun. I... It really does a good job of reminding you of what old Hollywood was. How it was an entertainment business. How much fun they had. How, you know, how much... When you look at what they put into the movies backstage now, and what you, they had to do and build and costumes of movies back then, it was so much fun. And they had a lot of really great jokes. They had a lot of jokes where they talked about how, you know, oh, Hollywood's not a money-making thing. This is, this is real art. And then when you look at it, movies now, it's a money-making thing. And it's not art. I really liked how they kept like bringing attention to how much talent you used to have to have while also making fun of new modern actors. Yes. My favorite, I think my favorite scene in the movie was with Channing Tatum. I love that scene because it was like a classic style musical scene. Like, those are just so fun and like rehearsed and they're just rehearsed so well and done so perfectly and then it's Channing Tatum. And do you think any of his fans even knew that he could tap dance? I'm sure, if, you know, Channing Tatum is so talented, he's so hot, he's so great in movies. Did you know he could tap dance? Because he can. He can sing and dance and tap dance and jump on tables and and then they made fun of how he's sort of gay, bisexual. It was hysterical. And they didn't do any of this in a preachy way where it was like, guys, movies have changed. It was in subtle ways that you just, you watched what you were watching and you thought of it on your own. You realized, wow, I can't believe how much things have changed. I miss this. See, with that scene, the dancing scene, you thought, you know, they're kind of making fun of like all those rumors that he's gay. Yeah. My impression was, you know, throughout the movie, it's like they find out that the kidnappers were a group of communists trying to spread their ideology through movies. And what I got from that scene was like, he was trying to undermine the American military. There was so much in this movie that worked in so many different ways. This movie has so many good nuggets in it. Oh, it was so much fun. You know, I, it's definitely not the Coen Brothers' best movie, but, I mean, they've made, like, nearly perfect films. This is pretty much just a really good comedy. And this movie is really failing because of its marketing. out like immediately as soon as they started advertising it to those to that audience they were gonna see it complain that it wasn't like that and say it's bad and now they are and it's really bothering me not because they didn't like it but because because they didn't like it that means it's bad like nothing different can exist I've heard people say that it's terrible because Channing Tatum wasn't in it enough like you had Three movies last year where he was walking around with his shirt off. You can't let him do something different. Why why does everything need to be the same? If he's not naked, 
and hitting on a woman, then I don't care. There was a lot of stuff with religion in this film, and I was kind of... I assumed they were implying Josh Brolin was, like, something related to the Bible, but you didn't agree with that? Well, I think they did... Like I said, the religious humor was my favorite. When he walks into a room with a Greek Orthodox, a Christian, a Catholic priest, and a Jew. And they're making sure that the movie isn't going to offend anyone. And in doing this, they make fun of how all their religions are so closely similar and so much the same, and yet they still get caught up, caught up on all these stupid, petty things. And it was really funny the way they played off religion the whole time. When Eddie goes to confess in the morning, the priest is just... He's exhausted. He's bored. He's, why are you even here? His, his patience is so worn thin, and I think they do, I, I think it's really funny, especially with the movie they're making in the movie being such a huge religious drama. I just think they did a really good job of depicting how people act around religion. George Clooney, that's the best movie I've seen you in. I think that's the best George Clooney movie I've ever seen. I haven't seen a lot of I mean, George Clooney movies. I don't usually like George Clooney because he just always just plays himself. And I really like how he made fun of himself on multiple levels. Like, he made fun of the roles he usually takes, he made fun of how overdramatic he usually is, and then he just made fun of actors in general who don't have any sort of their own beliefs and are just so easily taken over. I, I have so much respect for him now after this movie. I don't know what it was about Josh Brolin's character, he just seemed to have, like, omnipresence. He, he seemed to be everywhere, and he just did so many good things for people. And I just, like, I can't shake the feeling that they were trying to imply something, but I'm not smart enough to know what. I think he is the Mr. Fix-It of Hollywood. He's... They just brought up religion so much that I, my mind goes straight to there must be a parallel somewhere. If you like movies, if you like what movies used to be, if you want to laugh at what Hollywood has become... You should go see this movie, because it probably won't last that long with Deadpool coming out. And it's really good. It's worth your time. Yes.